Hello and welcome back my friends. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I make videos about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to help educate, raise awareness, and share my experiences and advice living with this condition. Today we're going to talk about classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I plan to do individual videos featuring each of the 13 EDS subtypes, so stay tuned if you're interested in learning about the rarer subtypes of EDS. So what is classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Classical EDS, as defined by the Ehlers-Danlos Society, is a genetic connective tissue disorder that causes severe skin hyperextensibility, skin fragility, atrophic scarring, joint hypermobility, and joint instability. Classical EDS affects about 1 in 20,000, making it the second most common subtype of EDS, with the most common subtype being the hypermobile type. The biggest difference between classical EDS and hypermobile EDS is the severity of the skin issues present. People with classical EDS tend to have much stretchier skin, more scarring, skin that tears more easily, and skin that has a harder time healing than those with hypermobile EDS. Another difference between classical and hypermobile EDS is that the classical subtype has known gene mutations that can be tested for genetically to diagnose the disorder. The known mutations are usually found on the COL5A1, COL5A2, and sometimes on the COL1A1 gene. Classical EDS follows a autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, meaning that if a child inherits one of the known mutations for classical EDS, they will have classical EDS, and a person with classical EDS has a 50% chance of passing the disorder on to their children. A question I hear a lot is, do you have to have a parent with classical EDS to get diagnosed? The answer is no. Actually, about half of the people diagnosed with classical EDS are the first in their family to get diagnosed. This could be because they possibly do have a parent with classical EDS who just doesn't know it, or it could be because of a de novo mutation or a new mutation that randomly developed when you were conceived. Now, say you take a genetic test and the results show mutations on one of these three genes. Does that mean you have classical EDS? Well, it depends on the exact mutation, also called a gene variant. Genes can have multiple variants, and those variants will fall into one of five categories. Gene variants can be classified as pathogenic, meaning known to cause disease, likely pathogenic, or likely to cause disease, uncertain significance, which is just like it sounds, a middle of the road, maybe it's disease causing, maybe it's benign, but more research needs to be done to know for sure. Likely benign means likely to not cause disease, and benign is known to not cause disease. Having a genetic variant found on one of the three genes associated with classical EDS will only get you a classical EDS diagnosis if that specific variant is pathogenic for classical EDS. For example, I have a variant of uncertain significance on my FBN1 gene, which is a gene with a known mutation that causes Marfan syndrome, which is another genetic connective tissue disorder with many similarities to EDS. Although I have a FBN1 variant, I do not have Marfan syndrome because the variant I have is not a known variant to cause Marfan syndrome, it's a variant of uncertain significance. Because classical EDS has known variants that are pathogenic for the disorder, it's usually diagnosed through genetic testing, but there are clinical diagnostic criteria for when genetic testing isn't available or feasible. The diagnostic criteria are divided into two parts, major and minor criteria. In order to meet the diagnostic criteria for classical EDS, a patient must meet both major criterion one and two, or meet major criterion one and three out of seven of the minor criteria. The major criteria are number one, skin hyperextensibility and atrophic scarring, and number two, generalized joint hypermobility. The minor criteria includes easy bruising, soft doughy skin, skin fragility or traumatic splitting, molluscoid pseudotumors or bluish gray fleshy nodules on the knees and elbows, subcutaneous spheroids or small hard nodules that are movable under the skin and formed by calcified fat, usually found on the shins and forearms, hernias, epicanthal folds, which is a skin fold of the upper eyelid covering the inner corner of the eye. It's commonly seen in babies and toddlers, people of Asian descent, and Down syndrome, as well as classical EDS. Complications of joint hypermobility, such as sprains, dislocations, subluxations, pain, flexible flat foot, etc. And finally, family history of a first degree relative who meets the classical EDS clinical criteria. Because classical EDS is a genetic condition that you're born with, there is no cure, but there are many treatment options. Treatment is tailored specifically to each patient by addressing their individual symptoms. Treatments can include medication, physical therapy, lifestyle modifications, pain management, joint bracing, and mobility aids. Because significant skin fragility is seen in classical EDS, 
people with the disorder should have any moderate to major skin wounds they sustained be evaluated early on in case intervention is necessary to better facilitate proper healing, as well as receive special consideration with surgical wounds. Surgical wounds should be closed without any tension and preferably with two layers. Deep layer stitches should be applied generously and upper layer stitches should be left in for a longer period of time than is usually recommended for the general population. Because classical EDS isn't something that is readily apparent just by looking at someone, it's considered an invisible chronic illness. Because it's an invisible chronic illness with a wide range of seemingly unconnected symptoms, people with undiagnosed classical EDS are unfortunately often labeled as hypochondriacs when they seek medical care. And that's exactly why I make these videos, to help spread awareness and knowledge. Do you have classical EDS? Let me know your biggest struggles living with this condition in the comment section below. If you thought this video was helpful, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, and don't worry, it's completely free. If you click on the notification bell icon, you will be notified when I release new videos. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.